Rock Hudson was a true icon of the silver screen during the 1950s and 1960s with an undeniable masculinity that captured the hearts of moviegoers. His chiseled features and charming demeanor made him a sought-after leading man in Hollywood, and he was often compared to legendary actors like Clark Gable and Gary Cooper. At six feet tall with broad shoulders and brooding eyes, Hudson had an undeniable screen presence that made him a natural fit for romantic and heroic roles. He quickly rose to fame and was voted the nation's top box office draw not once, but twice. This recognition was only the beginning of his success, as he went on to win numerous national and international awards for his performances on screen. Critics were also quick to praise Hudson's talents, particularly his standout performances in films like Magnificent Obsession 1954 and Giant 1956. His ability to bring depth and nuance to his roles earned him respect from both audiences and industry professionals alike. Beyond his on-screen success, Hudson was also known for his kindness and generosity off-screen. He was deeply involved in philanthropic work, particularly in the fight against HIV and AIDS, and was beloved by his friends and colleagues. Rock Hudson was born on November 17, 1925, in the small town of Winnetka, Illinois. Coming from a blue-collar family, his father worked as an automobile mechanic, while his mother was a telephone operator. Growing up, Hudson attended New Trier High School where he sang in the glee club and was known for his shy demeanor. Despite his humble beginnings, Hudson had dreams of becoming an actor. He pursued this passion after high school and eventually found success in Hollywood. However, before his acting career took off, he had to overcome some obstacles. In 1943, Hudson was drafted into the Navy and served for three years. After his discharge in 1946, he briefly returned to his hometown and worked as a piano mover. Hudson struggled to find his footing, trying his hand at sales in his father's appliance shop, but ultimately failed to excel in that field. Determined to make a change, Hudson found work as a truck driver for a food company. This job gave him the stability he needed to pursue his dream of acting. After moving to Los Angeles to pursue his dream of becoming an actor, Rock Hudson applied to the University of Southern California's Dramatics program, hoping to receive formal training. However, his application was rejected due to poor grades. Despite this setback, Hudson remained determined to achieve his goal. In pursuit of his dreams, Hudson sent out numerous resumes and photographs to movie studios. However, he received only one response from talent scout Henry Wilson, who represented David O. Selznick. Wilson was struck by Hudson's ruggedly handsome looks and decided to rename him Rock Hudson after the Rock of Gibraltar and the Hudson River in New York. Although Hudson was introduced to Hollywood studios, he struggled to make a lasting impression due to his shyness. His lack of formal training also made it difficult for him to stand out among other aspiring actors. His first screen test for 20th Century Fox Studios was so poor that it was shown to beginning classes as an example of bad acting. After years of struggling to break into Hollywood, Rock Hudson finally landed his first acting job in 1948 in a one-line bit part in Raoul Walsh's Fighter Squadron. However, according to Hollywood legend, Hudson struggled to get his one line right, requiring 38 takes before finally nailing it. Despite this shaky start, Hudson was determined to learn on the job and hone his craft. Over the next six years, Hudson appeared in 28 pictures, mostly in small supporting roles. However, he was fortunate enough to come under the tutelage of Universal Studios tutor Sophie Rosenstein, who recognized his talent and helped him to develop his skills. Throughout the 1950s, Hudson continued to take on bit parts and supporting roles, gradually working his way up to longer and more significant parts. Although he was often cast in adventure and B pictures, Hudson was determined to prove his worth as an actor. Rock Hudson's popularity skyrocketed in the mid-1950s. In 1954, Modern Screen Magazine declared him the most popular actor of the year, while Look Magazine named him the top male movie star in 1955. Hudson married Phyllis Gates in the same year, but the union only lasted for three years and he never remarried. Following this success, 
Hudson's acting career took a new direction as he became a prominent figure in women's pictures. In 1956, he worked with director George Stevens on the film Giant, in which he portrayed the complex character of Texas rancher Bick Benedict. With Stevens' guidance, Hudson was able to add depth to his performance and showcase his acting abilities. Rock Hudson's career took a turn towards comedy in the late 1950s after he delivered a remarkable performance in Richard Brooks' Something of Value and the movie A Farewell to Arms, 1957. He began appearing in a series of films with actress Doris Day, mostly comedy roles. While the quality of the movies varied, they allowed Hudson to explore his comedic talents. The films, which utilized innuendo, were a bridge between humor and permissiveness, reflecting the changing cultural attitudes of the time. From 1959 to 1965, Hudson portrayed humorous characters in Pillow Talk, 1959, Come September, 1961, Send Me No Flowers, 1964, and Strange Bedfellows, 1964. The films were commercially successful, cementing Hudson's place as a leading Hollywood actor. As he turned 55, Rock Hudson was faced with a difficult decision, whether to continue pursuing his film career, which was on the decline, or take on roles in television. Hudson wasn't particularly interested in the small screen, but he decided to take a chance on the series Macmillan and Wife 1971, in which he played the police commissioner of San Francisco. However, he made few worthwhile films after that, and instead appeared in two miniseries, the Martian Chronicles 1980 and the Star Maker 1981. Unfortunately, he was also cast in the poorly received Devlin Connection 1982. Despite this setback, Hudson's career found renewed success when he landed a recurring role in the popular soap opera Dynasty in 1981. He continued to act on the show until his decline in health forced him to retire from acting. His last screen appearance was in the 1984 television film The Las Vegas Strip Wars. However, in 1985, Hudson traveled to Paris seeking medical treatment for an undisclosed illness and collapsed. The news broke that Hudson had discovered he had a disease in mid-1984, but chose to continue acting on Dynasty while secretly undergoing treatment. For years, Hudson's managers and studios had dealt with the issue of his homosexuality, but his illness brought it into the open. Hudson had been keeping his sexuality a secret, and author Armistead Maupin revealed that he had met with Hudson in 1956 and urged him to reveal his homosexuality. While acquaintances had described Hudson as gay, he had refused to publicly comment on or acknowledge the reports. Rock Hudson became the first major public figure to declare that he had acquired immune deficiency syndrome. His illness brought much needed attention to the epidemic and helped to combat the stigma surrounding the disease. Rock Hudson had his last public appearance at a benefit hosted by his former leading lady, Doris Day. Little did the audience know that this event would reveal the horrifying truth of acquired immune deficiency syndrome in vivid and unflinching detail. Before his death, Hudson spoke out about his illness, stating, I am not happy that I am sick. I am not happy that I have AIDS. But if that is helping others, I can at least know that my misfortune has had some positive worth. Sadly, on October 2, 1985, Hudson passed away from AIDS-related complications at his home in Beverly Hills, California. He was just 59 years old. His death made him the first major celebrity to die from an AIDS-related illness. Today, Rock Hudson is remembered not only for his legacy as a talented screen actor, but for his courageous choice to go public about his acquired immune deficiency syndrome diagnosis. Rest in peace, Rock Hudson, and thank you for your courage and compassion.